You also can't see all 12 of these black dots at once for a similar reason. Go ahead and try, chances are you'll only see a fraction of them at once. The exact point your eye looks at is focused, but your peripheral vision isn't great and so your brain often makes assumptions for what's there. Because of the consistent gray line pattern, your brain assumes the rest of the image is just like that and misses the black dots until you look directly at them. These two rectangles are flashing out of phase with each other, right? How about now? For most, the rectangles will now seem to be flashing at the same time in phase, but they aren't at all. And yet, if we move these shapes beside them just a few pixels, you'll begin to see them out of phase again. The surrounding area has a direct impact on how you see and perceive things, even if the result isn't correct. Not convinced? Look at these flashing squares. Except what you may not have seen is that the middle square isn't flashing at all. If we remove the outer square, we see it for what it is, a solid color. Now try reading the sentence inside it. Did you catch the extra word? Your brain doesn't always notice mistakes like these because it doesn't affect your comprehension of the sentence and your brain would prefer to act quickly rather than to be perfectly accurate. Try staring at the middle dot in this illusion. When the picture isn't moving, the colors are clearly changing quickly, yet when the image starts rotating, the color change either seems non-existent or much slower. Our vision makes assumptions based on learning, memory, and expectation, and all of these illusions take advantage of this adaptation. It's an advantage to have rapid information processing, so instead of taking in every bit of detail to be 100% accurate, which would cause a brain overload, your brain makes assumptions. This faster perception allows for faster reflexes and faster conscious and unconscious decisions, an integral aspect of human nature. Much like this halo, if you stare at the center dot for long enough, the brain will simply make it disappear. It makes an assumption that the information is unchanging or unimportant, and as a result, you can't see it. All right, I don't know about you, but I love that kind of stuff. I love those optical illusions and you're trying to find things and you find out, in this case, how our eyes work and that we all have blind spots. All right, let's check out this first slide. Isn't it amazing what we see and what we don't see? Even in this slide right here, there's got these dots and, and there are black dots in the middle of every one of those intersections. But the wild thing is our brain can only see one or two at a time and it just fills the other parts in with just gray stuff. I just find that interesting how our mind works, how our brain works. And now, um, I want to do a, a fun little thing with you here if we could. I found this online and some people are able to tune in and see things that are not there that other people can't see. Our eyes are just a little different that way. And so I want to go through some slides here. And if, if you catch it, if you can see the word hidden inside of uh, the slide, uh, uh, say it out, right? If you're watching this and we're in a time of teaching right now, just raise your hand. And, uh, and let us know that you, you got it. All right, so the first one here, can you see this word here? Can you see the hidden word? The hidden word is dream. Did you get it? Did you get dream? All right, let's try our next one here. Can you see this one? I can do this one pretty good. Can you see this one? The hidden word is rose. That's right, the hidden word is rose. All right, how about this one, a little dark green? Uh, I got this one pretty good too. Hidden word, get the hidden word, it is moon. That's right. This one's a little harder for me, but I still got it. Can you find the hidden word in here? You got it. Say it out loud. It's cake, right? The hidden word here is cake. All right, this next one, I, I can't get this one at all. This one is just, uh, it's not even in there to me. But the hidden word, did you find it? Did you get it? I didn't get it. It's rain. The hidden word is rain. All right, here we go. Another one, just a few more. Did you find this one? It is sweet. The hidden word in there is sweet. How about this one? I did get this one. For some reason, I can find this one. This one is the hidden word in this, uh, you know, turquoise here is river. All right. The next one, this lime green. I, I got about half this right. I got it wrong when I first did this. It is bead. Bead. Uh, this one I can get. The hidden word in here is bee, like bumblebee. And then uh, the last one here, the hidden word is, of course, we're going to end with this word. Money. <laughs> it's money. All right. So how'd you do? Did you see some of those? Did you find some of those? Uh, you know, what's interesting. If you had other people around you, uh, they would have found different ones than you find. They would have had ones be harder or more easily easier uh, than, than you did. So um, there's definitely some that trip me up more than others uh, in this one. Some of them I couldn't see at all. 
And I just find that really interesting how some of us can see some things that others cannot see. Today we're in a sermon series and we're continuing in a sermon series called Closer to Jesus. And in this sermon series, we've been looking at the Gospel of John and going just piece by piece through the Gospel of John, focusing on Jesus, who he is, how he reacts with different situations and with different people. And as we've seen that, we've been able to get closer to him on our, in our personal lives as we see how he relates to other people. We can now relate to him uh, uh, better and closer. So that's the idea. One thing about, as we progressed here, we've seen, the, the, the Pharisees just were not getting it. They just were not getting it. And just like those words that were hidden in there, there was stuff right in front of them. The Messiah was right in front of them, but they just couldn't see it. They were, they were blind to seeing the Messiah right in front of them. And we've seen this now over and over again through this sermon series. We've seen how these Pharisees have been focusing on the wrong thing really mad that jesus would heal someone on the sabbath or or preach what he preached and 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 not realizing god was right in front of them the entire time so the story we're going to look at today is a bible story where jesus heals a blind man a man born blind in this bible story we're going to see that these pharisees thought they could see they didn't think they were blind but they were spiritually blind and the blind man who was born blind, he gets a, not just a physical healing of his sight restored, he also gets his spiritual sight restored so that he can see spiritually what the Pharisees could not see. We're going to go to John chapter 9, and we're going to start in verse 1. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Jesus answered, this happened so the power of God could be seen in him. It was a famous misunderstanding that all things that happened to anybody was always because of somebody's sin. And there was even a, a strange kind of doctrine that this baby had sinned in the mother's womb or something. And, and Jesus was like, that's not what this is about whatsoever and verse 4 we must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us the night is coming see he's got this darkness theme the night is coming and then no one can work but while i am here in the world i am the light of the world and then jesus verse 6 spits on the ground and he made mud with the saliva and he spread the mud over the blind man's eyes and he told him now go wash Go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. And Siloam means sent. So the man went and washed, and he came back seeing. Now his neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar, they asked each other, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Isn't this the guy that used to uh, be, be blind that we used to know? And now we're skipping to verse 14. Because it was the Sabbath that Jesus had made the mud and healed him. Okay, that... that that upset the Pharisees, verse 15, they asked the man about it. The Pharisees asked the man all about it. So he told them, he put the mud over my eyes, and when I washed it away, I could see. What's the big deal? And verse 16, some of the Pharisees said, this man Jesus is not from God, for he is working on the Sabbath. But others said, how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division of opinion among them in verse 39 jesus told him the man that was born blind i entered the world to render judgment to give sight to the blind and to show those who think they see that they are blind verse 40 some pharisees who were standing nearby heard him and asked are you saying we're blind verse 41 if you if you were blind you wouldn't be guilty jesus replied but you remain guilty because you claim you can see there's a whole thread here of thinking you can see but you're really blind thinking that you actually know what's going on but you don't know what's going on and then there are people who jesus restores he's the light of the world he restores their physical sight and their spiritual sight so they can really see what actually is happening 
Okay, so our next slide here. Have you ever had a car in your blind spot? All right, if you're driving along, you ever had a car in your blind spot? I know I have. And uh, very recently, because of the construction, you know, they they're take the four lane, whether it's 31 or 30, they restrict those down to just one lane. And when they restrict those down, then there's people merging, and it's really easy in times like that to have someone in your blind spot. And so you're merging over lanes and you don't realize there's another car there or someone else is there or something's going on. And I didn't, the last time this happened, not too long ago, I didn't uh, mean to offend this guy. I didn't mean to get, a, get in his way or be, you know, push him over. And I didn't, we didn't touch, but you know, I didn't mean to be that guy, but boy, was this guy upset. He was so mad at me because I didn't see him in my blind spot. And, you know, we all have blind spots in our lives, spiritual blind spots. We all have areas where we don't see. And, and we, you know, that, by the way, just because you have a blind spot, that doesn't mean you're a bad driver. We all have blind spots. Uh, you know, even though this guy, you know, honks and gives you the finger and he's not very happy with you. You know, hey, if you're like me, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't go out of my way to endanger this guy's life or hurt him or, or frustrate him in any way, but I forgot to check my blind spot when I was merging and it ended up being something that was not very, uh, not very good because I accidentally moved into his spot because I didn't check my blind spots. And we all have these. We all have blind spots. We all have things that we realize, we think we can see, but then we realize, you know what, we didn't see everything that was around us. Look, none of us like to be wrong. It's not a lot of fun. I don't look forward to being wrong. Oh, the happy day, I'm wrong again. None of us like to be wrong. And, and, but, but the reality is all of us have things we don't see. We have blind spots. We have things that are just beyond our ability to, to grasp, to comprehend. And we must be aware that we have blind spots. The most devastating thing that could happen would be for us to think that we don't have blind spots uh, it's a very dangerous person who doesn't think they have a blind spot that's the worst that's the most dangerous kind of person because that pride in their life i don't have a blind spot i can see everything i know exactly what's going on i know exactly what's happening i've got it all figured out that person's actually very very dangerous because a driver who doesn't think they have a blind spot is more dangerous than a driver who knows they have a blind spot they know there are things that they don't know about themselves, about uh, other people, about God, about life. And that spiritual blindness made it so that these Pharisees had Jesus, the Messiah, right in front of them, but he was in their blind spot. He, they couldn't get past this idea of working on the Sabbath and, and healing on the Sabbath. And that was just such a strangely big thing to them. They couldn't see that God was doing something right in front of them. God was doing something amazing, healing people. And healing the blind was a, was a, um, a proof that Jesus was the Messiah. This was something that only the Messiah was going to be able to do. And so here he is doing something amazing. And they just didn't get it. Because they thought they saw things the right way. But the reality is, Jesus was hiding in their blind spots. Now, Jesus helps us with these blind spots just a little out of time. You and I's blind spots. Jesus is so very patient. Our next point, see, layer by layer, Jesus reveals the things we cannot see. And in verse 39, Jesus says, I give sight to the blind and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the one who shines into the darkness. And in our life, he shines into that darkness and he says, hey, here's something that you don't see. Here's something you don't understand. And layer by layer, think of it like an onion. He just peels away and he shows us something and he says, oh, he shines a light right here. See this? You didn't know this about yourself. You didn't know you reacted this way. And let's, let's deal with this. And then he peels this layer back and he shows you about somebody else. You know what? They need to be loved. They're going through a really hard time right now. And you need to show them love. And this next one, he might peel back a layer and he shows him something about himself. This is who I am. This is how I work. This is how I do what I do. And then he peels back another layer and he shows us something we don't see about life 
or about his word. And that's how it works about ourselves and about the way we think and act and layer by layer. I am so thankful that Jesus just does this layer by layer. He just patiently peels away these layers of our life so that we, 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 in this process, we, we see things exposed. And by the way, he's exposing him not to make us feel bad or, you know, hurt our feelings. He exposes these things. So you and I go, oh, okay, Lord, here, take this. I don't know how to do this. I need your help here, Lord. I need you to help me, Lord. And so each of these layers of, uh, are being peeled away as the light of the world shines into each of the dark places, each of the blind spots that we have that we just cannot see. And Jesus does this because he loves us. He is, he loves us. I'd much rather Jesus tell me on the front side, here, Heath, here's, here's something you need to deal with. Uh, work on this. Or, or just give this to me would be a better way theologically to say, give this to me. And then so we peel that back and we give it to Jesus. I'd much rather be that way than just stumbling around in the darkness, hurting people, offending people, uh, you know, doing things I shouldn't do, giving into temptation, because I have not had the, I've not let Jesus into that process fully surrendered to him just coming in and revealing all the things that need to be revealed. So he's doing the work and he's changing our lives one layer at a time. Now, our next point here, don't drive on autopilot we all find ourselves driving sometimes on autopilot now what do i mean by driving on autopilot it's like if you go someplace on a real regular basis maybe to work or or to some place that you go on a near daily basis you can find yourself just on autopilot you just you just go and you make the same turn every single time and, and we do this, we go on aut autopilot, but I want to look back at this miracle that Jesus did. Because there's nothing autopilot about this miracle. When you look at this miracle, Jesus uh, is making mud from his spit and smearing it in this man's eyes. Now, think about this from this guy's perspective. Okay, he's blind, so he doesn't know what's going on. And Jesus doesn't tell him, um, you know, oh, here's what I'm going to do. You're going to hear this sound. This is me spitting. No, he just starts doing it. So he hears this guttural, I won't do it here on, on this video, but he's this guttural spitting sound. It's a gross sound, right? And he has to, Jesus has to spit enough that, that uh, this man uh, can have mud. I mean, that's, that's a lot of spit. So from this blind man's perspective, he just hears a, you know, and the spitting, ch 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 and then the next thing you know, how horrified would you be when, when and you, even with your eyes closed, you can always tell when hands are coming close to your face. There's hands coming close to your face and smeared something is smeared on your eyes. Oh man, this must have been really confusing and probably actually pretty gross. And I bet this blind man's thinking, what is going on? He was definitely wanting to be healed, but I bet he was thinking to himself, isn't there a different way we could do this miracle? Couldn't you just like uh, do the sign of a cross over me or something or just put some hands on me or something? No, God had a specific way of doing this miracle. And it was strange. Even now it's strange. But if we look at it, every single miracle Jesus did was different than the other miracles that he did. Jesus constantly did it different than the times before. And I think only a few times did he do a miracle of any kind the same way he did it before. It's almost always different. Now, I want to think about our lives. When we, when we do something that was good, we tend to then go on autopilot, where we do that thing over and over again, and we think this is the way it should be done now. It worked one time, so we're going to do it every other time. That's how we do it. And Christians, churches, you know, we're, we're the worst at this. Instead of hearing God each and every time for how do you want me to do this, Lord? How do you want me to approach this, Lord? How do you want me to deal with this, Lord? Which is different every time, just like we saw with Jesus' model. Instead of doing it that way, we just do it the way that worked the last time. 
and we go into autopilot and we just do it that last way. Now, Jesus, every, uh, the Bible says that he did what he saw the father doing. So every time he went to the Lord, he went to his father and said, father, how do you want this man to be healed? What's the situation here? Oh, spit and mud. All right. The next time he just speaks the word and the, the guy goes away healed. So every time was totally different because every time Jesus went to the father and said, how do you want me to do this? What's, what's the plan here? And instead, what you and I tend to do is we just go on spiritual autopilot and we just do what happened last time. And churches are real famous for this. What they'll do is instead of go, okay, God, what do you want to have done in our church? What do you want to have done right here amongst your people? That's not what they do. Instead, they look back and they go, all right, I see God where this is how you did this and so I want that same results of what happened in 1972. So let's do it just like we did in 1972. Well, God, God, we don't look back. We look forward. It will never happen like it once happened. It will happen in a brand new way. The miracles, we try to make, you know, methods out of the miracles when instead we just need to find out what God wants us to do this time and in this season that we find ourselves right now. Now, let's look at some common blind spots. Just a warning. What we're about to talk about right now uh, is not going to be easy. And it's, uh, there's probably a point or two in here that we're about to talk about that could frustrate you or uh, have you feel like you're getting your toes stepped on. Well, my, my goal here is not to frustrate us. My goal here, though, is for all of us to see some common blind spots in our life so we see them. Because the only thing more dangerous about a blind spot is if we don't realize we've got one. So we need to have these blind spots kind of uh, exposed here. So let's go through some common ones. I want to start with our kids. Our kids can be a very common blind spot. We can not realize that, um, that what's going on inside their, inside their lives and we can instead defend them when, when it's best not to defend them. We can find ourselves disciplining them uh, or not disciplining them properly or biblically because we want to defend them. We want to uh, embrace them. So let's say your, your child comes to you and says, you know, well, this is what happened. Here's the situation. So-and-so was mean to me. Hey, that may be the situation or that may be part of the situation. But it's probably not a good idea to go and and take that child's complete 100 percent word for it and just defend them completely because if we can see that the blind spot maybe our children are not as perfect as we think they are and we got to remember the goal of parenting is not to make our children's lives as easy as possible the goal of parenting is is not to barricade these children into a happy place the goal of parenting is to get them ready to live out there in that world we all know that world is harsh and mean and tough. So by making sure that they don't go through any difficult thing because we defend them nonstop, that actually doesn't help them in the long run. So we have to be careful about the very common blind spot of our children. We need to be uh, careful about the common blind spot of how we treat other people. Sometimes we don't realize that we treat some people near us, specifically those that are closest to us, we can easily treat them rudely or with uh, um, bitey remarks or anger or, uh, you know, things that come back at them in a way where we should kind of watch, our, watch who we are, but instead we're mean and angry and we maybe even scream or yell. We've got to realize that's a blind spot, that we shouldn't treat anyone like that, let alone the ones who are closest to us who we actually love the most those wouldn't be the kind of people we'd want to, uh, to treat the worst. But it's so easy to not realize how much pain we're causing in the hearts of the people that are near to us. It's a blind spot. And maybe the Lord's revealing that to us here today. The common blind spot of the way we handle money. Lots of people get into the, the routine, the autopilot of money. They just credit cards and more debt and they never have enough and they're spending money on things they shouldn't spend it on and they don't have money put where it's really supposed to go and and the proof that it's not just an income level when their income level rises they still have the same problems they still they're not able, able 
ever able to get up beyond that. Well, we've got to realize that many people have a blind spot of how we handle money. And we've got to see that. We'll never get the freedom if we don't have the light of the world shining into that thing saying, hey, you know what? I'm not good with money. So we all have to be aware that how we uh, spend our money is very uh, important. It's important to how we're going to live our lives and it's important to make sure our budgets are in line so we can have financial peace in our lives. Maybe the common, uh, the common blind spot would be this next one. Having bad relationships one after another. As a pastor, sadly, I've seen this where someone would break up with someone and they should break up with someone. That, one was, that person was hurtful or abusive or, or whatever and they, they break up with them and then the next boyfriend or girlfriend is exactly like the one before because they just find themselves back in this rut and there's this blind spot of, of, of who they're attracting. They think it's normal to have those situations like that when it's really not normal. Or we can have the common blind spot of our own past mistakes. We can just try to whitewash what we've done in the past, who we've hurt, what we've done, just try to whitewash it and just kind of get it out of our minds, get, get it out of here. We don't want to think about that. And instead, that's not helpful either. We've got to realize we have hurt some people in the past, and it's not helpful to just put that in a blind spot and pretend that, that those things didn't happen. No, instead, we've got to go back, make it right, in a, in a spirit of humility and say, I'm sorry I've hurt you. I want to make sure that from now on you realize I'm a different person. But one thing we can't do is just put it in the blind spot. No, the light of Jesus needs to shine in those situations. So who is it that you don't see? What is it that you don't see? Is there someone who God wants you to pay attention to, but they're in your blind spot? Is there something God wants to reveal to you, uh, that wants to shine his light into some stuff that you're doing, but, but it's in our blind spot. Remember, we all have blind spots, and Jesus is not exposing these things to make us feel bad. He's exposing these things so we can know that and not run into other things in our hearts and lives. I had a friend, and we were very, very close, and we had done all kinds of things together. And when this friend began to say some things and i began to hear from other people that they had said some things uh, about me that they didn't believe what i was saying and that i was not right in the word and and i just really didn't believe it we had had such a past that was so filled with beautiful memories i was just really and i put him in a blind spot and when this person began to do things in, in a kind of a betrayal type mode i i couldn't even see it and other people were trying to tell me, they were trying, you got a blind spot here. This person's not helpful to you. They're saying things. You know what they're saying about you? And I was like, no, they're not doing that. We've been together for a long time. We love each other. We're, I mean, we may not see exactly eye to eye, but it's going to be okay. And I, I just basically had them in a blind spot. And unfortunately, it was very, very painful because I refused to see what was right in front of me. Even though other people were trying to tell me and help me, I refused to see what was clearly right just, just right there. Have you heard of inattentional blindness? Now, doctors Arian Mack and Irvin Rock, they found a phenomenon called inattentional blindness. And it's when people were not watching uh, what they were watching. And so they had this experiment, and it's called uh, the invisible gorilla test. And so what they would do, these two psychiatrists, they had people passing a basketball back and forth, and they told the person watching this video, count how many times the basketball is uh, bounce back and forth, pass back and forth. So they were counting one, two, you know, they count. And they get to the end of the video and they ask them, did you see anything interesting about that video? You see anything uh, abnormal about that video? Unusual? And the participants, 50% of them said, no, I did not see one thing uh, unusual. And 50% said, yes. Well, in that video, while the ball's being passed, a person comes out in a gorilla suit, thumps their chest, and, you know, and then goes on. And it's like, that has nothing to do with the ball being passed, but only 50% of the people saw the gorilla uh, passing the ball back and forth. Now, this is how magicians do it too, especially the ones like the sleight of hand ma ma magicians. They're doing that right in front of us. It it's just that we're not paying attention 
to the right things. We're looking over here and they're sliding a ball under a cup or something over here. So, you know, we're, we're paying attention to this when this is all going on. And isn't that just like the enemy? We, he's got us so distracted, so busy, so filled up with these things that our blind spots are growing over here. We don't realize what's really happening. We've got inattentional blindness to what's really going on right in front of our eyes because he's got us so distracted. And that's how we create these blind spots in our lives. That's how these Pharisees created a blind spot where the Messiah was right in front of them. But they were too worried about the Sabbath and doing healings on the Sabbath and some kind of miracle working on the Sabbath. So what do we do? Our next slide, check your blind spots before making a turn. Before you turn, check your blind spots, right? And we mean this in a, in a decision-making way, of course, right? Before you make a decision, check your blind spots. Pray about the decisions you're making. Lord, is this what you want me to do? Is this a good financial decision? Is this a good life decision? Is this the right person for me? Is this what you want me to do? Is this how you want me to act? Or react is this how you want me to go about this situation we got to check our blind spots that's why time and prayer and the word and Bible reading is so critical because it's in those times that the layers are peeled back and the blind spots are revealed so we got to check these blind spots before we go making a turn another great way to check your blind spots is to run this by some veteran Christians that you have in your life before you go make a decision, say, what would you do in this decision? Uh, what, what do you think about this? And other people, from their perspective, they can see those blind spots that you and I can't see. They're looking at it from another way. It's not a blind spot to look at our situation from their perspective, and they can help us. I can't tell you how many times someone has been helpful to me, uh, a, a leader, a pastor, a mentor, a friend, has been helpful for, to me to see an angle that I just had not been seeing because I had blind spots. I just had not been seeing. We all have these blind spots. None of us is, is so aware of our surroundings that we don't have blind spots. We've got to realize we need the Lord's uh, light of the world into our darkness. And we also need other people. God uses them to be his light shining through them into our situation so we can see what's really around us now i want to show you a video this is a member of church of the heartland his name is russell warner and he's gone through a very difficult difficult situation um he's in the process or been in the process of losing his eyesight and throughout this great ordeal he has actually found himself starting to see life much more clearly even though he's losing his eyesight check this out well, today I have a friend of mine here with me named Russell Warner. He's got a powerful testimony that's going to show us all how to really see what's truly important. Well, to be honest, um, I thought my life was really good in my eyes. I did things I wanted to do. Sometimes they weren't the best things to do, but I did them. And I thought I was doing God of duty by showing up for church and doing the church thing. And then uh, I went to work and they said, I need to go get a test and... I found out my eyesight was not doing good. I, I went from a, a 20 50 in both eyes, which disqualified me for working. And then uh, two months later, I was down to a 20 80 and a 20 90. So, over a period of two months, you lost pretty much your entire eyesight, the ability to see clearly things that were around you. Yes, I was told that. Uh, I would never see dark, but I would be down to silhouettes, which would be just the outside of your body. Wow. During my second surgery, uh, the doctor said I would get color back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, I've been, my surgeries have been a blessing. My, all the doctors have been a blessing. Everything in my life has been a blessing mm -hmm. because I took the time to listen to God. Uh, I feel now that I'm at a 20, 40 in one eye and a 20 90 in the other eye i my i can live with this yeah. i always thought if i just hold the line far enough i'm in good shape mm -hmm. until the day my eyesight left 
But as my eyesight deteriorated, and I thought I was done, because I asked God to take me. I'm a coward. I wouldn't kill myself, but I asked him to take me. And he, plain and simple, just like sitting like you and I are, said, your life is just beginning. I've spent my whole life chasing things. In my, 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 my agenda, I always thought that I could do this, I could do that, I could take care of this. No matter what situation, there's a way I could fix it. And when I went to the eye doctor and they told me my diagnosis, I became noticed that there's a problem that I can't fix. It's a, it was a world-changing event for me. The thing that I've noticed is that I've always made plans to do, to do, to do, to do. I never included God in my plans. I know that sounds harsh, but I kept him there, but like in a box. When this happened, it, it just turned my world upside down. Well, there was a time when, when I thought that I could see everything that was going on, that I could see, that I really see nothing that was really going on. It was just Russell's world. But, but now that my eyesight has been, I'm going to say, shut Russell down. Yeah. That the day God sat beside me, I felt like a new person. And he has never let me down wow. from day one. I just thank God that he took the chance of setting me down and hoping I'd listen. He's my relationship with God right now is the only thing that matters. Isn't that interesting? Russell had good eyesight, but he didn't really see what was important. And then as he was losing his eyesight, now he has started to see things his whole life in a totally different perspective. Now, please pray. We're going to pray for uh, you know, please, all of us pray for Russell's complete healing, that all those uh, surgeries work and that he's able to have his uh, natural sight restored uh, through, through miraculous Jesus means or uh, through doctors and nurses and the people that Jesus uses. But please pray for him as well, because uh, he's had his spiritual sight restored. Now we need that natural sight completely restored. So how do we apply this to our lives? Two things. One, ask Jesus to reveal your blind spots to you. Ask Jesus, Lord, I, what am I not seeing here, Lord? What is going on in the shadows? Light of the world, come and shine your light into the dark places that I don't see, the things I don't know around me. I know I've got blind spot, Lord, but I don't even know what they are. And you just come to Jesus with that spirit of humility, asking him to reveal those blind spots to you. And number two, check your blind spots before you make a turn. Check them. Go to prayer about every decision. Lord, what's going on here? What, do you, what, what am I missing, Lord? And, and go to the Lord in prayer and word and read the word of God and let those things come into your life so he reveals who you are, what's going on around us. And also, don't forget those veteran Christians and those pastors and leaders and mentors that are around us. Make sure you check your blind spots before you make a decision. And we'll save ourselves. We'll all save ourselves a whole lot of bumper cars of running into other things. Let's have a word of prayer if we could right now. Lord, I pray right now for all of us. We all have blind spots. And I pray for all of us right now that, Lord, you are revealing these blind spots to us right now. You're the light of the world. And you're shining your light into these situations. Step by step, piece by piece, layer by layer, revealing what we need to know and we trust you in that process lord help us to remember that we need to check these blind spots before we make a decision help us to be those that humbly come before you and say lord help us humbly lord run these things by other people so lord our blind spots are revealed we pray all this in your precious name in the name of jesus amen mm -hmm.